This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. From what dear you may find out, certain people not like me. Everyone got us bag of thing now. Makes true me, I do it like Nike. But me not fear no guy now. No matter how hard them are say, me just a go and do me thing now. Me just a do it like Nike. 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 Them one pies in me, show me thing up. Pass me and them girlfriend a link up. Dark where you did that, when they think tough. Talking heads with Naughty is brought to you by BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, Fine Threads, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, and Tropical Gyros. From what day you may find out, certain people don't like me. Everyone talk a smack a thing now. Bex throw me, I do it like Nike. But me not fear no guy now. No matter how hard they must fight me. Me just a go and do me thing now. Me just a do it like Nike. 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 If I tell you the truth, if I were you, then I probably would have liked me neither. Fresh to the top, on again. The Tuesday, August 1st edition of Talking Heads is on and popping your boy Naughty in your company. Right up until 6 p.m. on this Tuesday edition. And, um, yeah, listen, I mean, I get in text already. If you answered in, in the earlier shows, that's the earlier shows. I haven't even given my trivia yet. But, you know, they said the best for last, so you can hold on and wait. It's all good. <laughs> i give it to you in a second. Caller, I see i get to you in a second as well. Uh, it is a Tuesday edition. You know, we got the, uh, the Freeport Report lined up for you. All right? We will be talking to Sarah Kirkby and, uh, Sarah Kirkby and Darren Cooper in short order. All right? Um, but a little, couple of little FYIs for you. like to, you know, keep you in the know and get you where you want to go. Don't forget today's Tuesday, Crazy Tuesday. You got five pieces of chicken for ten at KFC. All right, and then bucket it up this summer, people. Connect with your loved ones this summer with a bucket of delicious KFC fried chicken. Sharing is caring, Bahamas. So this summer, let's bucket together. KFC signature buckets make the perfect addition to any party or beach picnic. Complete with delicious fried chicken inside. You love KFC's buckets. have got you covered this summer. Nobody does chicken like KFC. Let's bucket together. Don't forget that crazy Tuesday going on as well. And don't forget, Collect is proud to be 50, so the Bear of the Bahamas has decided to give you the chance to be one of five 1,000 cash prize winners. Every week, starting June 30th, you can enter to win $1,000 at participating liquor stores and bars. Just purchase a three-pack of Collect, write your name, number, and email address on the back of your receipt to enter to win. All right? And don't forget, John's is the authorized distributor of Chef Work Chef, where the most respected global culinary brand. John carries chef jackets, chef pants, aprons, and hats, all designed to keep culinary professionals cool and comfortable. And John's is now also carrying chef knife sets by mercenary color, uh, culinary tools that always make for a better chef. All of this available for you at John's Careware, Rosetta, and Carmichael. Both locations open for you 9 a.m. to 6 through Saturday. And remember, John's serving you is a pleasure. And don't forget... It's all about that uh, strawberry cheesecake ice latte. All right, Bahamas, get ready for something very delicious this summer. Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. This delicious ice beverage features bold espresso with sweet strawberry marbled over milk and ice. Topped with velvety whipped cream and cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make it strawberry summer this year with strawberry cheesecake ice lattes available exclusively at your favorite Dunkin' locations because you know the Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. And it's available for you at Downtown Bay Street, Paradise Island, Palmdale, Burning Road with the drive through East Street South with the drive through Carmichael, the newest location, and at the airport. Pre-clearance, post-clearance, and arrivals. So no reason for you not to be running on Dunkin'. All right, before we get into everything, let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? I'm a pleasant. Good evening. What you got for me, Bucking Mud Sparky? Man, look here. If you listen to your voice a little while ago, that ram- what do you call that rambling that you're going through? 
I thought they called me a bucket mouth, but what, I don't know what. What voice? What, what, no, that was you just. What they would? I don't know what kind of label they'll put on you. How you remember all them things? Which, 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 which you talking about now? What, what, what? Man, you, they, 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 no, you gotta listen to yourself talk. But which you voice? No, this was Bucky. I, I got plenty of voice notes out there. What's going on? But you gotta listen to you and and and, and take them talking baseball, all them figures and all them memories and things. Y'all could just talk off the top of your head. You must be re- you be reading from something that can't be in your brain. Man, I watched a lot of it, Sparky. Watched a ton of it. But hey, you really good. Then I really bow down to you. You ain't okay. But I bow down to you to be in a bucket mouth. You was a ratchet jaw. I was a ratchet jaw too, man. You know what I mean? And, mother and mother. you know, and you know, I send you every. A lot of people don't know. I hear them ridiculing me after I talk. But you, just, you need to do this to Sparky. You do that to Sparky. You got all my voice notes and everything. I said everything I got to you because you 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 in the master's best chat group, and you was get everything. And if you get that last one I said out, those people who's re- who's re- about, what they call it rich about me need to start up and march and talk, but brave and this and that. Tell them let you listen to what I be telling them. But Sparky, I got I got one voice note, but you circulating saying you know you encouraging people to march, but you might not march. Now, no, you know, no, I, I, I got your shirt. I got your, your double X for you. And, no, no, no. And, 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 no I, need, I need a tree X. All right, well, I can get you a tree X, and I no, got a, bo- I don't a, have no problem a box of brown bottles for you, too. I don't have no problem with that. The problem is, I have a car park out in front of my yard. I've been waiting. They promised me the car park was coming in last Tuesday. The car park didn't reach yet. The mechanic waiting to put the uh, a mass air sensor. In my, my Nissan Maxima, that park out in the front there, I can't move. The person who used to take me round and round, help me out, they gone on a Caribbean cruise Saturday. So I locked down in here. I well, got, I'm, watch, I'm watching, come and tell, tell in September, Sparky, yeah, so that but cruise could be me. back. But listen to me, Naughty, Lord, help me out. I got a back problem and a shoulder problem. I'm being hit by the chiropractic for every day. So I locked down in Pride of State. When I make my, uh, my comments and stuff, I be making it not from the heart, from the brain. See, the heart is on the organ. All right, well, Sparky, we can fix that. So, I can come for you, personally. So, so, what I'm saying and I can is, pick you up, and I can take we, you out we, there with we, me. We ain't talking about that. What we talking about is not about P. The, the bottom line, this is not about PLP after them. So when them people call in and ridicule me about Q, I mean, um, 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 Brave Davis, all, it's not about Brave Davis. Well, what you mean, Sparky? The current it's administration of the day, is, is, is it playing all of this as well, too? Then you can't let them off the hook. But it's about the Commonwealth of Bahamas and our future of our children. Right, but we, we, and, and obviously we get to this point where we fed up because we've been reminded by this administration again that we voted in a failing administration that's not serving Bahamians. That is why they have to be part of this collective so and past administrations need, as well, red we and yellow. Need, we don't need them to bring the tank from the dog on defense force. We don't need them to bring the defense force. For what? The, the protest? The police. That we are entitled and have a right to do as citizens but of this country? What you we mean? We need a bunch of police on base with a bunch of AK-47. They can come watch? Barricades and dogs and everything. Why? We just want to say. But, but we could have a PLP rally in the middle of one the other day making all kind of noise condoning Chief Bell who hasn't been fired or resigned yet? Come on, Sparky, now. But see... Come on no, now, I don't, 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 get me, don't make me play like this a voice and I have to light you up, man, because look like no, you're deflecting no, 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 and defending no, no, the indefensible right now. Hey, we don't light up one another. You know what we try to do? We try to light up the, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, our, our flag, our... our right, our, our, well then, if we, if, we, if we try to light them up, we got to hold all administrations, past and present, and accountable for where we are today, as well as ourselves for being the conch to repeatedly keep electing these individuals to do us the way they've been doing us. Dottie, we still got to hold our leaders to our flag, our emblem, and our rights, our constitution and everything. And we don't care who we put down there. They got to let us know. You care how big grown men, full of it, and, and letting him out with an ankle bracelet and all kind of things. These things got to stop in the country. It got to stop. Right. There's so much things got to stop in this country. And we got to stop these lawyers. Taking these criminals to school, I mean, the court, getting them out on bail. The fellow thief, some cop out the other day, couldn't get bail. The other fellow killed somebody, but he got bail. 
Well, I tell you, Sparky, we got to... Because the lawyers get people off because they're getting paid. It's right. everybody. It's corrupt. Everybody getting... So what about them lawyers we elected as politicians who could change the loopholes in the law but refusing to change the loopholes in the law? You got to call it full hundred, Sparky. You can't, you can't go with kid gloves on this. You got to put on iron, cast iron, you know, chain mail gloves like the knights used to wear and box some of these politicians up because that's what they need. But you all right with me, Sparky. I can get you on the march anyway still. I got your triple X and your brown bottles. All right, Mr. Producer, let's get to the break, flip side of the break. We'll try to get down to Freeport for the Freeport Report. And we'll be uh, opening up the lines as well if you we can't get through the Freeport. We got lots to talk about. And we keeping it full hundred on this show. Jacked it right down the middle. Anyhow. Boy, well, Sparky, sound like you're speaking out of two tree mouth today, boy. I don't know which mouth you was talking out of today. Anyway, let's get to the break, Mr. Producer. <laughs> From the fried chicken experts, creators of the Kentucky Chicken Sandwich, comes a whole new way to enjoy barbecue. The KFC Crispy Barbecue Sandwich features a 100% premium white meat Kentucky Fried Chicken Filet stacked with bacon, cheddar cheese, crispy fried onions, and barbecue sauce on a toasted, buttery brioche bun. The new KFC Barbecue Crispy Sandwich is available only for a limited time. Try one today and enjoy a whole new level of flavor. KFC, it's finger licking good. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video, want to step out and look great, then fine threads is your place. With fine style, with elegant taste, then fine threads is your place, is your place, is your place. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. We're gonna give you a check every week for a year. Percy Spencer Plan, Island Game keep you with it. Percy Spencer Plan, Dream Big, we will help you live it. Percy Spencer Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Spencer Plan, from the friends you can trust. If winning is a must, come play the game you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Ready for something very delicious this summer? Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. Enjoy the bold flavors of Dunkin' Espresso and sweet, luscious strawberry, all topped with velvety whipped cream and irresistible cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte your go-to beverage this summer. The Bahamas runs on Duncan. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. We're back at you on the Tuesday, August 1st edition of Talking As. We're about to go to Grand Bahama. We got Sarah Kirkby and Darren Cooper lined up, ready to go have a good conversation with both of them. But uh, before we get down, let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? How you doing, my little brother? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Double J? What's happening? I'm fine, man. You need to come to the base, man. I got all my boys from here, and everybody wants shakes, man. Before you go to the talk show tomorrow, come and talk to the boys, man. All right, all right. I- I'll have to pass through there, JJ. Talk to I'm far too, and, and when you see your coat, I'm, I'm your uh, comrade, uh, Mr. I'm the guy, I'm the, I'm the guy from Grandmama, I'm, I'm the grandfather. He owes yeah. me $10, man, because he's eating about my time, man. That's why I don't call this show, man. All right, all right, all right. Same all right. like you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, and thanks, and thanks, take my call. No problem, man. What you got for me today, bro? Man, nothing, man. I'm happy, man. <laughs> you happy? It's not like you've been drinking a lot of bush beer today, man. What got you so happy, man? I don't start until after 12. All right. 
Driving right. in the day or driving in the night? Because it's 5 o'clock yeah, somewhere. 8 o'clock I'd be sleeping. You know, I wake up early in the morning back here at the farm. All right, all right, all right. All right. So, you just happy today. We got you happy today, JJ. JJ, JJ gone. All right, JJ's happy, folks. JJ wanted to share with everybody that he's happy today, and I appreciate that. At least somebody's happy today, like like just genuinely happy. Anyhow, Talking Heads, Guardian Ready Man 649 FM, who's this? Talking Heads. Hey. Hey. We don't hate you. You're just naughty by nature. Not because I hate you. What's going on, GNN? Right here, man, right here. I called her. And I, I, you see why we just got to jump on Sparky? Sparky, Sparky, Sparky's the fifth caller, man. Man, Sparky, Sparky, Sparky talking about the tree farm out today, boy. He, boy, he's backtracking. I had them roller all, skate on him. All the time. And he's skating in reverse. They get the old skating ring. I dare say Sparky 70 something now. We got one more shot at trying to right this boat, get this ship right, this ship of state. And he talking about he got back up. And listen, let's back the last time we had a, 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 a demonstration. I got a cast from my ankle straight up to my groin. You understand? I can't even walk. But guess what? I was out there in a wheelchair. You understand me? Yep. We got to show support, Naughty. He can't be back. You can't talk all. about it. You got to be about be it. Be about it now, man. This is the second 50 years, you know. You understand? And that's basically what I call the butt spark you on blast, man. You look like all you could do is hide behind a microphone. But the tester just hit me up and said, boy, naughty after those folks paid Sparky a visit. He's been backtracking. He can't believe he did this to the country. Throw him a contract and he won't talk against the PM again. Yeah, he's scared, he's scared to lose that little piece of property he ain't got a road. Car get in the back there. He's scared to lose that, you see? But you got to be a man, man. You got to be a man. You got to walk it how you talk it and talk it how you walk it? Yeah, you see, he see his son was is fortunate enough to be some in Canada learning how to fly. My children and my grandchildren ain't that fortunate they here. So I got to leave something for them here. Well, you know. And, go ahead. And in any event that his son have children, they may want to come back here. He ain't looking that far. Some got to be there left for them, for generations exactly. to come. E- exactly. exactly. We, we, we got to leave something here that says we are the Bahamas and we were Bahamian and we are still Bahamian. Exactly. And then the, I hear from a boy. My partner in crime for a little while, JJ. What's going on, JJ? Just call yeah, him from yeah. you. I am. That's what I'm saying. I hear from him for a little while. That's my J- boy. JJ that's say he happy. Huh? JJ say he happy. Why is only Wally boy could have gone in JJ Shack three months before John could do? But he was a Wally boy, boy. Oh, all my life. I've been letting you call the show all this time and you was a Wally? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Mr. Producer, by like in December, don't take this by call at all. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll see you in January. I, I, I could go in J. I could go in J. Shark two months before and J. J. Shark three months before. That's how cool I am, you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, all all my put a buy. So they listen to my T-shirt, man. What you saying? I got you covered with your T-shirt, man. You straight? I got. Yeah, I, I, I can let y'all know when we dispersing them and all of that, man. Y'all just, I just take the time. I just back. He putting in special order, but he wants you. Yeah. You ain't ask me what size I wear. Man, I know what size you wear. You use a strong extra large. I bought a 2X, two, two man. Are you 2X? All right, we got you covered with 2X, and you covered. Yeah, man, buddy. All right, man. Man, look at we getting 3X for Sparky so we can put it in the mouth so he can, he can talk out of one mouth. That's the cover yeah, of the rest of them mouths. Yeah, I'm telling you, we game, no 3X, man. We need that 3X out there. Nah, nah, that's for somebody who got to take Google. Be out there and be about it. I with you. You know what I mean? Be out there. I, I spread in the word, and I letting people know this one ain't like the last one because a lot of them skeptical. Don't worry but about I it. Say naughty, I say naughty ain't like that. I say naughty ain't. Apolitical. If me, so if me wanted that. Jesus got to walk out there, then I could do it. No, but I could be ready to roll in on the side of you. Well, we, then we all good. Only take two to get <laughs> a party started. But what Rob Bay say? It takes two to make a thing go right, right? All right, 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 right. So we make right, it happen. Right, right. All right, brother. We'll talk yeah, to man. it. Be safe, GNN. All right, let's get to Freeport, man. We got Freeport. Our chairman, we got Sarah Kirkby and Darren Cooper with us today, man. And we have a good conversation with them. Obviously, we'll talk to Sarah at first. Get all the, you know, the good stuff out of the way, what's going on in Grand Bahama. <laughs> and me and Donald chop it up with, with the bad and the ugly. What's going on to both of you? Glad to have both of you. I hope all is well with you and yours. Good to be on, <laughs> so, I'm so, laughing. You having a good day today. Boy, I tell you, man. I, I'm happy because JJ's happy. You see what I'm saying? JJ's spreading the happiness. 
<laughs> so sorry we missed you last week. That was my fault. I wanted to apologize. No worries, man. It's all, it's all good, man. But let us know about the O2 Resort. It was Resort. all good. I was promoting Grand Bahama. I know you You do a great job. But what's up with the O2 Resort and Marina? All right. I see the big headlines promises a different kind of product for Grand Bahama. It's good. It's happening. So they say they're doing really well. There's a good update here. For those of you who are trying to figure out where this is, it's uh, next door to the, um, oh, Lord, now I've forgotten where the apartments are. Darren, help me out. <laughs> I swear I'm getting old timers. Is this the old run and marina? <laughs> no, this is um, right next to, it's going to be uh, right next to where, not Redbeard's, but Dalton. the apartment building next door to them. They've already started building. They've already put uh, construction up. The docks are going in. So it's good to see this happening with more, hopefully, to come on the island. And, um, you know, it's all the spark we need. Just need that airport just a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, the airport's definitely important. But, I mean, I'm looking at the renderings, though, Sarah. This looks pretty impressive. Marina? Yeah, no, it looks, it's fantastic. Very, all very high-end. Um, the buildings that are, the houses that are coming to us are um, really great second homes. I mean, we really are the perfect second home market. And that's how we're being sold really to a lot of people these days. We're 30 minutes by flight, uh, two, two to what, five hours on a boat, depending on what kind of boat you have. And we also have a huge, a, such a fantastic canal system and lots of space for boats. We're in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. They're running out of, uh, of uh, you know, we're, docks to put boats in so this is perfect for us and it actually ties right into the other two stories that we have in the paper because we had 23 boats over the weekend before for this fantastic tuna frenzy they did with everybody come florida to support this great event and it was packed down in west end all the hotels were packed uh, all the docks were packed these guys were having a fantastic time fishing they were spending money and really having a great fundraiser for uh, this beautiful lady, Dana, who unfortunately had passed away. And she loved the Bahamas and loved to fish. Well, I see it was well attended, though. Good words yeah. about oh, too. It was, frenzy. Oh, it was packed down there. And you should have seen the fish. It was phenomenal. I went down there just to have a look and I could not believe it. And then when I heard this story, that's how we ended up doing something on it. But it was packed. And everybody I talked to could not say enough about Grand Bahama, how great it was to be there, how um, easy, accessible it was. Where they, all, they were staying at three different resorts down there. They were all full. So that was really great and great for the West End community as well. So that was good. They had uh, Marl uh, Blue Marlin Cove, Old Bahama Bay, all packed out, and all with these fishermen that were having a great weekend there. And luckily, the weather was phenomenal. And then speaking of housing and stuff that, and keeping things full, the realized how successful the Wassum School is. And that's our medical school that opened up. And they're now having their next set of students coming in. They started coming in smaller ways at first, at like I think 10 to 15 students. Now they're coming in each quarter at a batch of 50. Um, I actually know one of the young boys that is graduating um, next week. And he just said the program was phenomenal for him. He's now leaving here. He's been here for three years. No, two years, sorry. And he's going off to the States to get his residency. But they're looking for housing here on the island. So we're trying to help them get the word out that they're looking for more housing for students that are coming in. Um, you know, these are medical students. They're uh, going into their um, training program. And um, this is big news for Grand Bahama. And people don't realize how much, like this shipyard, how much this helps our community and keeps our economy rolling. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, when you look at it, it's, it's really great. blossomed over the years. And I think it's something yeah. that needs to be supported because obviously now you're getting the college town kind of feel surrounding. It. So it if and, you can get that to, to blossom out, then it, it can be lucrative to everybody involved. It is. It really is fantastic. And, and you know, obviously it helps the supermarkets, the laundromats, the, um, the convenience stores. Everybody benefits, the restaurants, everything. And... Everybody knows these kids as they go around. They're like the Wassum kids. They're all the medical. And they're also helping out in the community as well. Like they're supporting local events and they're being volunteers. They're working with the uh, Bahamas National Trust. I know they've also um, been helping with that. We're looking to help us with the, um, the Bernie Butler swim coming up. 
So this it's a great win-win for us with this community uh, coming in. And, and you can't see them because they're so hidden behind um, on the main road, but the school is phenomenal and what they built there was beautiful. So this is a plus for us. And then we also had Royal Caribbean here uh, last week looking for, um, at a job fair, which was great. They said it went really well. Great turnout. So that was super. And, you know, we, I don't want to lose any more people off the island, but these are great jobs for, for people that are looking for work and, and transient work where they can go and work here, maybe come back and open up their own business and do something else. So this is great. And I'm so pleased they were recruiting here. And then I had to kind of make a shout out because I'm a bit of a theater kid. So leader camp back at the Regency, which is we've announced a lot how that's come back after Dorian, which took us a long time to rebuild because obviously after the hurricane, the first thing you're not rebuilding is your theater. You're rebuilding homes. You want people back in their homes. So it took us a while to get to the theater. It was great to see such talent on the stage, total over. And that was super for us. So that's my good wrap up for you, boys. There you go, boy. You, you got plenty, <laughs> plenty good. And of course, plenty you know, get get the, get the supplement every Tuesday in the Guardian. All right, you know, spend the money and get that Grand Bahama new supplement each and every Tuesday in the Guardian yeah. and find out what's going on. Stay up to snuff with, with everything in Grand Bahama. Now, Sarah, you know, we appreciate you chiming in. But now that we got the, the Pollyanna segment over <laughs> and all the goodness out of the way. Let, let's talk, this is done. Yeah, let's talk to Darren. <laughs> so you, you, you get a little, a little sobering dose of, of reality. Um, well, he, and he will. I know, I, I, I know I, he will. But, and I do want him to address the airport situation because that's important. And, and, that's, and that's, I hope he's on that. That's one of my first texts. Naughty asked Darren about the airport. That's literally one of my first texts. So, Darren, how goes it? How are you? And what's going on with the airport in Grand Bahama? <laughs> hey, Naughty. Hey, guys. Good to be on air with you. Uh, Naughty, you know, um, it's so interesting that you to ask me that question. I, I had the great fortune uh, a few days ago in speaking with one of the members on the new board that has the responsibility for the airport uh, to tell me how impressed that I'm going to be when they unveil when they unveil the plan. And I told him, you know, uh, you, you guys have been talking so long. Um, could you hurry up, unveil the plan so that we could see something. And, and I go back from April, I think, from the business outlook when we supposed to see movement um, on that property for God knows. I feel like I think one week later, we supposed to see the demolish, um, the demolition yeah. of that old building. It is still there. No unveiling of the plan. Look like the board is lost. They don't know where, where they are. They don't know who they who they working with. It is one big mess. And uh, I... I could say that I think the governor literally stopped talking about Grand Bahama because we don't hear nothing from the DPM. I couldn't hear the last time he was in Grand Bahama. And I don't even know if the prime minister remembers that Grand Bahama still exists. So I don't have anything on the airport other than a bunch of talks and promise that we've been promised uh, to see uh, months ago. Um, and so I hope the good uh, member, he'd be able to tell them, come unveil something. Um, I do know that management or, or position of management has since changed um, since the, the new design or the cabinet visit to Grand Bahama. They now have someone new in charge who I believe, uh, the young man that, that, that I'm being told that's now in charge, I believe that he has the ability to take the airport where it needs to go. He's been in the industry for many years. He knows the airport. He knows uh, the ins and out about the whole facility. Um, and, and so I think he, he, he will do well if they can just unveil something. But I don't have anything on the airport other than, other than talks. All right. Let's go to the next uh, Elefante in Grand Bahama. What about the hospital, Darren? What's the uh, update on the no, hospital? Well, I, know that, I know that there is a community clinic that is being built. Uh, that was the groundbreaking of the community clinic. It's called the Freeport Clinic. Um, it is not a hospital. Um, it is just an outpatient facility that is now being built. Groundbreaking was for. It's not a hospital. It won't give us extra beds um, that we need in Grand Bahama. It won't give us wards. It won't make space for maternity, uh, for pregnant patients. It is an outpatient clinic facility that is set to be built in three years, two and a half, three years. 
is what we're going to get. So probably after the election or right before the election, we'll do a groundbreaking for um, um, a hospital. But we wouldn't see it in this in this uh, administration. So um, there's nothing new on the hospital other than the trailer park that I think in another couple of days should be uh, ready finally, to be Finally, finally done, yeah. We should have uh, an update on that. We're going to have an update on that next week. Yeah, so so that there, that that's the trailer park. Now, not even talking about there's a trailer park where they yeah. remove uh, the, the the staff parking, and they put some trailers in there, and and so we should see that opening in the few days. One of the things while we're talking about hospital, Grand Bahama do not have a functioning working MRI machine, but yet we care about Grand Bahama. We care, we care about the well-being of the people. But a private facility has the only MRI machine which has been down for weeks. I can't say month. And so, um, you know, bunch of talks uh, a few weeks ago, um, two weeks ago, they had a they had a sudden death in in Western, um, and the residents have been calling for uh, an ambulance to be stationed in Eight Mile Rock. It took the ambulance. Uh, an hour to get from Freeport after dealing with other patients um, to West End. And by the time they get there, the person was, uh, from what I've been told, was suffering a heart attack. Um, and he he uh, he passed away. Um, he uh, he could have probably made it. Um, they went to the clinic in, eight, in West End to get the, the doctor, but the doctor said he can't move because they had no car. So there was no station, government car, oh for the doctor to go to the community. And so, you know, we, we talk about we talk about caring about Grand Bahama and the little basics of the things that's needed for the island to be able to function. We're still struggling with. We're still, we're still working with nine My beds God. for surgical and nine beds for medical um, in a, on an island like Grand Bahama. Um, but yet we care about it. The hotel is a done deal. In no deal behind it. It's but I was just going to ask you, a taxi just, a taxi just chimed in, Darren. The, they're renovating the the, pro, the the old prop club, um, and hopefully the government will be able to open it back up soon. So as I, from what I'm seeing now from from the beach side of, of, of the property um, is renovations going on on some of the restaurants and trying to get them open because government can't, can't seem to get itself. So that's what the government's doing now with the Alokaya property. So it's minimal it it's up. minimum movement on the hotel because I got taxes asking, will the hotel be up and running? Probably in 2028 sometime. Oh. oh boy. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. I got a couple of callers here. Let's see if they got we questions really, for, for Grand Bahama. We got stuff we got we got stuff we gotta sort out here, Darren. You're nailing it all. And if, if you don't mind me saying, um uh Naughty, on the hospital, what the frustration is People aren't waiting on the outside anymore, which is good. You can go in, but it's still not functioning properly. There are some great doctors and nurses and staff working there, and but it, it must be so frustrating for them. They don't have enough beds. Um, you know, there's people who have waited, had to go into the emergency. They check in there to have surgery in the hospital, and there's sometimes not a bed for them in, at midnight, and it's crazy. There's it's just not happening there. And it really needs to get sorted out but for the health of the island and everything that we've been through. Well, right so now, I just wanted to back when, Darren up on that. When you talk about when you talk about the medical, I mean, the emergency part of the, the hospital um, is one thing. Um, and again, you still don't have adequate space. They would have used they've been using the waiting area of the of the emergency part where, where persons would wait to see doctor as an emergency room um, and, and bed space because again. Um, the previous administration would have done uh, this big million dollar uh, renovation, but it, it 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 took it from the hospital size to an actual clinic size. And so, you know, we we've continued to suggest that that government uh, invest in the Eight Mile Rock Clinic, invest in the West End Clinic, invest in the Hawksburg Clinic, invest in the High Rock Clinic, and make these facilities a 24 hour facilities where persons in the nearby neighborhood would be able to utilize these facilities in making sure that they have emergency access point to capacity. We got the nurses. We just don't have the space um, at the main site. 
So if we could now use these, especially Eight Mile Rock being the largest settlement in Grand Bahama, we should be able to open up the Eight Mile Rock Clinic and, fun- and, and let it function as a 24-hour facility and put in some makeshift uh, trailers to allow it to be some wards, um, um, spaces for persons in that area. But we're just talking. We're not, we, and, and, you know, you know, and, and we got a government who, who just want to shoot the breeze from, from Nassau, but don't fully understand the functioning of Grand Bahama, but they care about us. But they don't understand the functioning. And if they would come off their high horse and come to Grand Bahama and listen to the people who've been here long enough, who could tell them some of the easiest route they could take to better serve the people. They won't do it. They're too high up there. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Mr. Naughty. Yes, sir. I have to give you a history because that particular person who calls on complete, you will hit me left, right, and center unless you know the history. All right, Sparky, but you ain't got to give me history now. You still, no, no, still no, calling and all that. We're we talking in Grand Bahama right now. Yeah, but I thought you was moving. I was trying to get you before the 5 o'clock hour when you talked more. All right, but, but Sparky, real quick, what's the history real quick? What I was saying, in 1958, when my mother gave Gus Cooper those, the first sponsorship for Michael Gatt, Michael, I mean, For the Michael Valley Boys, Jackson. correct. you told the story when many she, times. So I told the story over and over. When I took, with Philip Box, founded the first banner, and all the gully Indians and all of the people went with the first banner, the, the gentleman that just called, all the slimy and all of them used to be Valley Boys. I took the first banner, at seven years old, because I couldn't stay home at night, my mother was working at the hospital. And when we went at the Valley Boys, I tried to get it quick to say, I used to be able to walk in all the slimy and wooler and all of their doggone shocks whenever I wanted to as a Valley Boy. I'm trying to tell that doggone, that gentleman, that I don't talk that in 1978, when I, as a 25th Masonic Lord St. James, organized a blood march from Rawson Square to the blood bike. And the Masonic Lords donated 195 pints of blood in one month, which is still the history of the blood bike today. When I also, with the pigs, organized the kids and kites gadgets on the Western Fort three years in a row, with all the children in the Bahamas being able to get everything free, from all the uh, more uh, candy. Uh, all right, Sparky. What, what's your point, though? Because I, I got to get to your point because I got callers on the line. The and point I... is, the things that I have done in this country and organized, the gentleman was talking about me just talking. He uh, okay. knows the things that I have already done. Right. Okay, so I'm glad and you made me. Okay, I did some things around here. I organized a drive through with the CB. Yeah, call me tomorrow, Sparky, and list them off so you can get on him. But I got to get Freeport wrapped up today, and I want to be sure. He talking about Sparky. I was dog on, on Bay Street before he even know what y'all can do. All right, Sparks. Take care. Talking heads, Guardian Radio 96. <laughs> hey, Naughty. I, What's you know, going I'm on? Laughing, laughing at myself. You know, let me, let me wrap it up real quick. Two things. I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to tell you how to fix it. What happened was in 1969, when I was born, there was a speech, bend or break for Freeport. And there are two people listening over there. Listen carefully. Bend or break. It didn't bend, it broke. So enjoy your brokenness. Now let's move on. What's the solution? Because we see it's broke. We see you crying. You got all kind of ministers over there. And you got a minister of Grand Bahama. That's an extra position that you pay VAT on. And I don't know what you get for it. In the private sector, we'd fire you. You fired all six of them. But how do you fix Freeport, Naughty? Tell me, Graham. Quite, Tell me how you it's fix quite it. quite simple. Freeport should look something between Morocco and Taiwan. You see, Taiwan's about to get their <clears throat> backside kit, like Hong Kong did. You invite them to come to Freeport, and we'd be the chip capital of the world and hemisphere. And you all got a distribution shipping point there. It's perfect to do. Now, banking 2.0. We know it's going digital and crypto. We make that the Morocco of the hemisphere. Listen, we partner equally joint venture with the foreign people and the locals over there and wouldn't ever have to work again. You hear what I'm telling you? But you don't want that. You love crying. You ain't got no hospital. In 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 seven in fifty years you haven't got a new hospital. Now I'm not calling nobody stupid, but I mean if you're gonna keep voting for the same two people who ain't give you a hospital but gra- got you like got you like an animal in your main society, wouldn't give you a hospital in fifty years. I dare you to vote for those two again. That make any kind of sense to you, Naughty? So how do we fix it, though, Graham? 
Lord, I just told you how to fix it. You talk about a hospital not being put up there. They ain't put up a new hospital in New Providence in 50 years yet. Bro, and you still get vote for the same people. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, then. So, so, so I told you how to fix it. And wrapping up the fix is this. You need someone with the vision to invite Taiwan, who's about to get taken over by China like Hong Kong did, to bring the chip manufacturing capital of the world right here one day away from the United States of America. And you know this thing is going crypto and digital currency. You can do banking 2.0 in Freeport. It will be somewhere between Morocco, stupid rich, Taiwan, extra rich. You wouldn't have to work again. But oh, we can have another SPF, FTX finale fiasco again, too. No, no. You see, FTX is when you let a young man come down here and swing you because you didn't listen to Graham and some others on Guardian Radio in 2017 tell you how to do it right. Now, when you want to do the show on how to fix Graham Bahama, you let me know. Ne- next then, Tuesday, you and Darren Cooper could be my guests. No problem. And bring on your boy, Wayne Johnson, because he had sense, too. You know what? End or break. It broke. What you want me to do? I could tell you how to fix it, though, next week, Tuesday. Next week, Tuesday, we'll see you, Graham. Oh, boy. Let's get to the break. But before we get to the break, uh, Don, I say I got anything else to add before we get out of here. I thought those would have been potentially, you know, questions for Freeport, not not just, you know, running well, I, out. I look, I look forward to next week's conversation. Um, definitely wherever I may be in the world. I will be uh, logged in and definitely logged on. Because I, 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 who lives in Freeport, should really, you know, speak on Freeport. Agreed. That's fine, but you know, you know, we <laughs> we uh, we are always open. Um, I, I don't throw anything in the garbage until you know I, I conclude that I can be used, and so I'm always open to hear uh, people's views and opinion. And so I look forward to the conversation. Grandma Hammer do need help. We need hope. Um, and all we've been getting, uh, like you know, we we've, we've been we've been We've been recycling uh, with the possibility or the hopes of being able to get some things. And unfortunately, we've not been getting it other than a bunch of broken promises, empty promises that's not been fulfilled. And so uh, thanks for having me and look forward to next week's conversation. And thank you for keeping it so candid, Darren, because, you know, we, we, you know I, I won't lie. We got a set of taxes. All right, Naughty, what Sarah got to say? We want to hear the good stuff. We need some refreshing news. <laughs> Let me get another set of <laughs> Okay, now Sarah finished. You tell Darren bring the real now because I wouldn't know what's going on. No, I like it. Darren knows what he's staring at. And it I works. Know, because we've been, we've, been, we've been talking about this because we've got this whole situation with the, with the Port Authority. But Darren and I believe in the Port Authority the way that it should run properly. The problem is Port Authority aren't getting along and it's not helping our situation. And we need that to get resolved. And we need these people, anybody, to stop arguing and work together to make Grand Bahama work. We have a gorgeous island. We have beautiful streets. We have a laid out city. We have room for growth. We have everything. But things do not get approved the right way. It is not a one-stop shop. There are a lot of difficulties that don't that that make things not work for us, and we have the same issues that NASA has issues with, uh, in, you know, with immigration problems and other things like this, and customs and duty and bonded issues. But at the end of the day, we have to get our government officials and our port authority to work together to make it happen. the 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 way that the the port agreement was set up is a successful piece of legislation. And the people that work here, the licensees, want it to work this way. But we we have to get our government and Port Authority working together. Darren, would you agree with that? I agree. I've been telling them long time. Let's get to the round table and have a real conversation. Governments, I yeah. don't need for them to get to the round table because they've been talking a long time. But ain't nothing happening. So I know who they're talking to. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we got to get to the break. But I appreciate both of you. Have a great week. And we'll talk again next Tuesday. All right. Thanks. I wasn't okay. too Pollyanna. No, man. I know you got a little fired up there. I, I see. I, yeah, I, I see you throw down a little bit. All right. Let's get to the break. Flip side of the break. We'll be getting into the news. And, uh, and at 5 o'clock, I will be talking sports as the Tuesday, August 1st edition of Talking Heads continues oh, right after. Can I, can I say something on sports, please? One second. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Say, um, if you do cover world, if you do cover the women's soccer, it's been phenomenal. And I'm so upset. I've been a big real media about the fact that. They are not showing the women's games on mainstream. We're still having to go to Telemundo and all these other places to find the FIFA World Cup games. They are selling out. All right, all right, Sarah. Sarah, you've gotten you've gotten equal state. pay now. Just relax. You get equal coverage next go round. Okay, just calm down, Sarah. <laughs> no, I want it now. <laughs> yellow card, Sarah. Yellow card. Yellow card. No, I, red card, man. We had Colombian, Nigerian, right. Indian, Jamaica. 
Just, it was amazing. We should have. We should see it everywhere. All right, I can't give you a red card because we got to get to the break. But we'll talk next week. All right, I'll keep it right where you got it. Talking ads continues right after this. Ready for something very delicious this summer? Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. Enjoy the bold flavors of Dunkin' Espresso and sweet, luscious strawberry, all topped with velvety whipped cream and irresistible cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte your go-to beverage this summer. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. A lot of folks are wondering, what is the Agrarian Award? It's an award show to celebrate the people who produce the food that feeds the country. So September 16th, we're giving out trophies and money to young farmers, backyard farmers, sheep runners, goat herders, pea pickers, onion planters, basically everyone. But we couldn't fit all that on the invite, so we put agrarian awards instead. Go to adiobahamas.org to find out how to nominate your favorite agrarian. The Agrarian Awards, September 16th. When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together, and we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey for every infusion and follow-up, for every step of the way, for every care in the world. Please get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative, Visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. George Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy stuff. We cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carry small home appliances. So come on in today at John's. where we put fashion at your feet. Attention all KFC lovers. Are you ready to get crazy on Tuesdays? Now you can get five juicy mouth-watering pieces of KFC chicken for only $10. It's crazy. Five pieces of world-famous KFC chicken, handmade with a secret blend of 11 herbs and spices for only $10. Don't miss out. This crazy offer is only on Tuesdays and only at KFC. KFC Nassau. It's finger-licking good. This is... Is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, Fine Threads, Janae's Uniform Center, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, and Tropical Gyros.
Yeah. We're back at you on the Tuesday, August 1st edition of Talking Heads. We're up into the 5 o'clock hour, so we're talking sports. And uh, Pearlie will be zooming in in short order. I'm sure he will... Uh... Yeah, I'm here. I'm pissed, he... but I'm here. Okay. Why? Because I made a reference to you being a certain kind of soccer. Is that what it was? My text? Oh, no, 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 no. Because no, you're no. used to I, that. I, I you're used to that. No, I mean, you being facetious. My unpleasantries, yes. yes, <laughs> yes my yes, shade, yes. my salt. Yeah. No, we, the Dodgers had a trade with Detroit for uh, Eduardo Rodriguez. And the guy, you put, uh, pull his no trade clause and say he don't come to L.A. I can't believe you coming from a last place team, the first place team, chance to play in the playoffs and you don't want to come. Stay where you is. Boy. Boy, I tell you, Pearlie, how does it feel to be jilted? Y'all done traded for everybody named Ma over the last week, but now you don't get him, you upset. I have. I wanted him. I wanted him. I wanted him. I be need a nice little left hand picture we needed him. But that's all right. There's more to come. Hey. I still got 50 more minutes, 48 more minutes. You don't, you don't miss your boy Turner in Boston? I do, you know. Actually, I, I leading do. The league I do. In, leading the league in, in RBI since, since June or July or something, June or whatever. Last 29 games, yeah. 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 Last 29, last 30 games. Yeah, he's been up. He's he ripping. Cover off the ball. But this is what he does. In August, is when he, or July, August, when he started hitting the ball. Now, you know what? San Diego would have been, would have been smart to try to move Manny Machado the way he'd been hitting the ball recently. He was number two on that list. And nobody, no takers, no, not even trying to trade Manny. Nobody wants Manny. Manny has got a terrible attitude. Man, he can hit the crap out of the ball. He sure can. He sure <laughs> can. But I thought they were gonna. I sure. I, I'm still. They may pull it. They may pull. Um, they may pull the trigger on on Juan Soto. Yeah, but I mean, come on. Soto and and Machado, two different players, right there. Yeah, yeah. But Machado is Machado is a is a fixture at, at San Diego. They ain't going nowhere. They I going nowhere. I personally believe. I personally believe. That um. Manny Machado might end up in Dodger Blue one day, Pearlie. No, no, no. You don't think he's so? Not liked. He, he's not liked in that. He made some comments. When, when, he, when he left, when he San Diego, he said, oh, he'll win, a, he'll win a World Series, which didn't happen. And then he made some, some derogatory comments. So, no, Dodger fans don't like him. They, whenever they, San Diego played the Dodgers, he come to the bad days booing for the whole time. I, listen, it, it's it, it's a long history there, Pearlie. You know, did, yes, did, it is, it is, it is, it is. So I, I don't know, but yeah. how, how many minutes left? Fifty eight minutes. Forty six minutes left. Wow! And and so by the by the time we come off the show, most of the trades will be done. You know, you see, Verlando went back to Houston. Yeah, Verlando went back to Houston for sure. Stat Boy was ecstatic about that earlier. He said Houston gonna make that's a run a now. I, 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 that's a good move for him. That's a good move. He should have never leave Houston. You know, Verlando, that's, that's a good move for him to get back there too. I mean, he was all right with the Mets, made some money, but that's all right though. And the Mets, the Mets are giving Houston fifty-eight or fifty some million dollars to take him. But you want, yeah, saying I'm no Bob, Bobby Benilla situation going on ever again in their lifetime. <laughs> But listen, I, I agree with Stadway. Houston now with Verlander back with what they got, they've, they, they've become an instant contender. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. They're, they're not, they've, they've become the AL favorite. They'll exactly. It'll be, be great to watch them in the Rangers go out and show, him and Shoyza pitch against each other. Shoyza, that'd be nice to see. Correct. I mean, so that, listen. That, 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 that threw a, a, a nice curveball in the American League. It'd be nice to see. So I think Houston is now the front runner in the American League with that one pickup. Houston has really escalated with that move, though, Pearlie. I can't lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good move. I, I, now, I, and he continues to pitch in the way he's pitching now. They should be they they in the running to repeat as World Series champs. Very good position. If you look at where they are now, they're only half a game behind the Rangers at sixty and forty-seven. Yeah. That's what the Rangers yeah. would have been sixty and forty six at this stage of the game. I, the Rangers are not the Rangers are, don't, don't surprise me, you know, because they should have done that last year when they picked up uh, Corey Seager and Seaman. They should have they should have been the team last year, but they just couldn't get it together. Seager got hurt, Seaman was hurt. They just didn't get the act together. But they they're playing what I thought they would do. Now the problem is they're three and seven in the last ten games. They've lost three straight. Yeah. Yeah, the Astros yeah. are, are six and four. I think they're going to make a move, but but the Rangers and the Astros are definitely in contention for that for that wild card. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Because yeah. right, right now, the Orioles are number one, Rangers number two, Twins number three, Rays number four. That's based on division leads. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm on division leads. Then the Rays is the number one wild card. Astros is number two. And then you got six, seven, and eight, all the way down to the Yankees, all separated by three and a half games. Mariners by three and a half. Yeah, you bet three, you bet three, three games out of, out of the wild card. Out of the wild card. The Yankees need to seriously focus on playing for the wild card right now. The Yankees, if you, you haven't pulled the trigger on anything. And Nothing. You need, outfielder. you need an outfielder. I think uh, what, uh, what Junior Steinbrenner is going to do this offseason, what Hank is going to do, pull a page out of Daddy's book. You know what that is, right? Spend money. Open up the checkbook, baby. Open up the checkbook. You better do that. You better do that because, you know, everybody else doing it. When you got small market teams out playing, out playing, Big money teams, big market teams, you need to revisit how you're spending your money. Yeah, but these small market teams have really good talent. And this is August. Let's see in another 30 days how they separate, you know? All right. Well, press ball. Let's press your ball now. August is the, they call the dog days of summer. Let's press your ball. We got, uh, we will talk some more baseball before it's done. If any okay. updates come through on the trades and, and who we like tonight a little bit later on. But I just got an interesting text, Purdy, and I don't know if you saw it over the weekend, but I, I watched it. Naughty, what did you think about the Terrence Crawford uh, Spence Ooh. fight? Uh, Crawford convincing me to be Spence. Like now, I'll be honest with you, all right? Uh-huh. I was a big fan of Spence. I talked about I him on the are. show. I I, I, and he had everybody in that division. He beat the toughest competition in that division. But when it came to Terrence Bud Crawford, he was the man on Saturday night. I watched it. The, the first round, Spence won. And every round after that, Crawford won. Crawford. In dominating fashion. Three knockdowns. There was no covering for it. Spence was clearly outclassed. I think yep. it had more to do with coaching rather yep. than fighting. Because I still will put Spence up as one of the pound-for-pound pound best boxers. Skill-wise, there is. But his corner was clearly outcoached. Clearly outcoached. Would, would you safely say that Crawford is probably the best fighter pound for pound right now? No, because I got a couple of people I can throw in there. You you cannot you cannot disregard Javante Tang Davis in any way, no, shape, or can't. form. You can't. No, you can't. You can't. But All right. Crawford putting a good argument after Saturday night. No, no. A good argument. Craw- Crawford is putting a good argument there. But, you know, you also got uh, Devin Haney Jr., who's, who's quite yeah. a talented young man. You also have... Now, listen. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Um, they have... Um, they have a couple of fighters that, uh, that are in that, in that talking. Jamel Charlo is another one. Yeah, I've heard of him. I haven't seen him fight, though. Um, but I'm telling you, Watched the fight and I just had it on ESPN. I said, "Hey, let's see what's going on." And man, I sat there and I was mesmerized. I was mesmerized. Yes, I was mesmerized by that fight. It was a great fight, Pearlie. I ain't gonna lie. And I'm thinking the name that you really have to watch out for, though, if 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 Crawford wants to claim that 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 title as best pound for pound, his next <laughs> fight needs to be against Jerron Ennis, who's 31 and 0. Out of Philadelphia. Same Same Same, yeah, well to wait. Okay. That's somebody who he needs to fight. If he wants to be and claim to be the man, Jerron Ennis is the only thing holding him from that title right now because Spence was one and, and he, he discarded Spence. Now, should there be a rematch? Yes, there should be a rematch. Okay. And I think there's a clause in every champion's contract that they get a rematch. Well, it's up to the Egan Ox for it if he wants it. Right, and I think they well, should do that. Beat me takes that. He may not want to go through that again. <laughs> but if he asks for it and he's motivated enough to go and he's fighting with a chip on his shoulder, we might be on to a to a great series in boxing, Pearly. You would make it. No, what if? What if? Just hear me out. What if Spence wins the, the, the second match? Now you got to have a rubber well, match. Then you got to have a rubber match. Yeah, yeah. That goes up there with Duran and 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 Leonard. That goes up there with yeah. Hagler and Leonard. Come on, man. That goes up there with yeah. with, with with Leonard and and Hearns. Come on. Yeah, yeah. But I was very impressed with Crawford. I was impressed with his work, his footwork. I was very impressed Look, with his I, I, Listen, if it was close, listen, I tipped my hat. You could ask that where I was like, by the third round, I was like, Crawford's going to win this fight. 
two ways. Unanimous decision or he's going to knock him out at some point. I thought it was going to end in seven. I thought it was going to end in the seventh round when he put him down. And he the knockout came. Cool. But it, it, it yeah. proves to you as well, too, though, that I really think that the undoing of, of Errol Spence was, was that corner. Think so? His corner let him down because, listen, when Bud Crawford came out fighting Southpaw, all right, and he's a righty, yeah. then you should have had a, a, a counteraction to go with that. You should have expected that. You should have known, okay, he's going to come and fight a Southpaw, Southpaw. Let's see what he does with that. So you should have been able to counteract because it's called... He well prepared. He, Crawford was well prepared top to bottom. But like I said... If he wants to claim that that title is best pound for pound, he got one more to go, and that's Jerron Ennis. And that dude is a monster. 31 and 0. Checks out all the boxes. So let's see. But Cra- see a couple, a couple Crawford, Crawford to me, right, pound for pound, best on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I yeah. think Floyd Money Mayweather in his prime would make short work of all of them? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Would he make them look bad with his defense? Yes. Now, the way I saw Bud Crawford fight on, 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 on Saturday night, I would have loved to see him take on a Roberto Duran, a Tommy Hearns, or a Sugar Ray Leonard in their prime. Because mm. he evoked memories the way they fought, Pearly. He, he evoked memories of Duran with the punching power in both hands. He evoked memories of Tommy Hearns getting out there with the reach and the jab, making people look stupid. And then he, he exhibited the, the, the IQ and, and the ring demeanor and the sweet science of Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, he did. You know, he, he really did. He really did. Bud Crawford, really is, did. listen, I don't normally jump on dudes who I pick against, but listen, I, hey, he, he, he made a believer out of me. Can't yeah, run from you it. And I spoke about this. When they, when you and I spoke about this before. And Gardner used to call in a lot talking about um, Terrence Bud Crawford. Gardner had been on Crawford for a yeah. long time, so I give Gardner his credit for, for, for being on Crawford's bandwagon, like I was on Spence. Yeah. Yes. Because if Spence would have won this fight, I'd have been the first to say, I told you so for months ago. <laughs> so it is what it is. But I did mention <laughs> Jerron Ennis back, back in the day. He was upcoming. Yeah. He's had four fights since then. One all four, three by knockout. I think he's, he's next one primed. To, and listen, there's that Japanese fighter as well, too. Can't think of his name right now, but he's undefeated as oh. well. And he's pretty solid his own right. Okay. Did you see the preliminary with... Um, with Pitbull? Uh, oh, goodness. With the, with the Mexican guy and, and, and the Filipino guy. You mean Pitbull? Was it Pitbull? No. Oh, crap. What's the name? That was an earlier fight. I probably was a joker. I caught the last two. I caught Pitbull, Spence, and Crawford. No, it was... It was, it was I can't remember. It was the Mexican kid. Um, the Filipino kid was favored. And the Mexican kid beat the powder out of him, too. And it was a unanimous decision. Yeah, there were a lot of upsets on that card that night. Yeah, but that was a good, that was a good card, though. That was a really good card. It was an entertaining fight. Um, yeah. So to that text, though, hopefully we answered your questions. I, I still think Jerron Ennis is the next hurdle for him to go, but he could, um, he could claim best pound-for-pound pound fighter if, if he gets over Ennis. I don't think him and yeah. Davis will ever fight. Him and Tank Davis will never fight simply because of the weight classes. So you'll have to compare now, them from a distance. Now, what Crawford, what, what Crawford has accomplished was undis, un, undisputed champion in two weight divisions. Listen, uh, Crawford was well to weight from, from one uh, federation. Spence had belts from all three, WBA, WBC, IBF. Sp- right. Crawford has all the belts in the welterweight weight division right now, all four. But he was also undisputed, I think, in, in, in middleweight or junior or, or something else. Might have been junior welterweight or light, light junior welterweight, maybe. I don't think he's ever yeah. fought anything uh, heavier than, than welterweight. Yeah. Well, I was very impressed with him. And the referee stopped that fight in time because he was about to put a pound. In. You know, you see certain things. Um, and you don't see them. And you don't see them. And, and, and one is Swaggy P. At the uh, USC alumni game. You remember Swaggy P used to play for the Lakers, right? Yeah, I remember him. Um, so why is this dude going to the alumni game wearing jean shorts? Well, yeah. you know, there was, anyway, I can keep he that. He actually gone right. to the scrimmage was, in jean shorts. There was suspect about him from back then. <laughs> You won't cause problems. Let's I, move I on just can leave that completely alone. Um, but if you look at some of the NBA offseason moves, there's still some uh, free agents left out there. 
lingering around, yeah. Pearly. Yeah. Heard yeah. any news on any of them? Yeah. I know. I know. Right now, Christian Wood is still out there. So hopefully, you know, somebody, uh, somebody will sign. I, I would like the Lakers to sign him. To tell you the truth, then you could put AD out there at the power forward, and he can shut up. And which which so any any I I I've been I haven't gotten much information on. It. I've been trying to look up some information on the um Bahamas national basketball team. I understand, buddy. All those guys committed to trying out for the to trying out the, the playing for them. Buddy, and buddy, Kai Jones and DeAndre Ayton have all committed to play in Argentina. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. We need that, and I think that'll be because you know that'll be good for 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 De- DeAndre because he he needs to impress improve his image. Yep, I, so I'm happy. I'm happy for him. I'm happy. I'm happy they're doing it. And I and I think that team could make a little run. Uh, yeah, they could. They could. We could play for some respectability in that, man. Americans. Mm, they got to see how it pans out. Yeah. Yeah. What about the NBA in-season tournament, Pearly? Have you I haven't of... bought into that yet. Well, if you look over in the West Group A, okay, um, it's crazy. The group consists of three playoff teams, the number two seed, Memphis Grizzlies, the number four seed, Phoenix Suns, and the number seven seed, Los Angeles Lakers. I haven't bought into that yet. However, it was the Portland Trailblazers that had the best record in head-to-head matches among the five teams in this group last season. So what a group. The Blazers, the Lakers, the Grizzlies, the Suns, and the Jazz are in one in-season tournament bracket. But that's, that's, that's all in, almost all in one division. Almost all in That's one, from the one West. Division. And then if you, look over, if you look over at the East in Group A, let's have a gander at that. You have uh, what it looked like to me is that the big guns will eliminate each other, huh? and then some 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 Cinderella Cinderella, Cinderella might get in there because in this division you got Philadelphia, Atlanta, Cleveland, Indiana, and Detroit. Looks like this division is set for the Sixers to win. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And they said that Boston and, Boston and them will beat up on each other, and then some little jokey team will probably come and win the in in, in season tournament. Well, they've announced now the East Group B. They haven't introduced the, the West Group B. But this group is headlined by three playoff teams. The Milwaukee Bucks, the number five-seeded New York Knicks from last year's playoffs, and the number eight-seeded Miami Heat. This is a loaded division. And they also have the Wizards and the Hornets in there just to show up. That's two chalks who they could throw in there to get beat up on. Or I, think one- Tommy Farm has been, I think Tommy Farm has been traded. They didn't say where, though. They say he focused in the manager's uh, office and said he's and gone. Left and, left and street closed. No word as to where he's gone yet. Ah, so now we need to look at that. Tommy Pham. They, it might be to you guys, Pearlie. Well, we could use a left. We could use a, a left fielder, but I don't know. Okay. I, I think he went to the Padres. We going back home then? No, this, 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 no. Let me double check this. He was trade. Where, where are they trading him from right now, Pearly? He's in New York, eh? I'm trying to see right now. He's in New York. They haven't said any. Um. Yeah, he's been traded the last couple of years, so this is nothing new to him, but obviously, it, it, it wow. A day ago, you got... I never wanted him there, so it didn't bother, that don't bother me at all. But he has been traded, but they haven't said to where. They haven't announced that in a minute. Um, it, It's going to pop up in a minute, because it's, it's literally just been done. Yeah. So you never know, he might end up back home in, in L.A. with you guys, man. Let's see what happens. Pearly, come on. You know you're excited. All kind of Dodgers coming back home, man. Yeah, but I, I wasn't a big fan of his, so that's all right. Why you don't like him so? I just didn't mind my spit didn't take there from when he was here. Okay. I know how that is when my spirit don't take to a player. I know. I know. I'll call no names, but I know. Okay. So let's get to the break. On the flip side of the break, we'll be back. We'll talk some more sports. 
Uh, we'll get into some NFL, and we'll get you ready for the final 10 with Rich Eisen or Colin Cowherd. We haven't decided who's going to take you home yet today, but we'll figure it out. That's all coming up on the flip side of the break as the Tuesday, August 1st edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Shop early to get your uniforms and catch Janae's Uniform Center's buy four, get one free sale. Free monogrammed and regular school shirts, dry fit and cotton polos, jumpers, skirts, boys long and short pants, PE shorts, underclothes, tights, socks, neckties, belts, sleeping mats, hair accessories and character work desk. Get 50% off backpacks, lunch bags and raincoats. Buy four school shirts, get one free. Buy two skirts, jumpers or pants, get the third 50% off. Need embroidery and monogramming done? Visit Janae's Uniform Center early, beat the back to school rush. Janae's Chesapeake Road back to school special. Restrictions apply. Tell them. Ready for something very delicious this summer? Introducing the new Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte. Enjoy the bold flavors of Dunkin' Espresso and sweet, luscious strawberry, all top irresistible cookie crumbles for a match made in latte heaven. Make Dunkin' Strawberry Cheesecake Ice Latte your go-to beverage this summer. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Are you dreaming of the perfect summer getaway? Apply for a tech consolidation or personal loan to win an airline ticket to Paris, Miami, or New York. Win up to $2,500 in cash and more. For details, call 356-7764 for Nassau, 602-6811 for port, 823-4374 for Abaco. Hey, it's your boy, Charlie Bahama, and let me tell you about a deal you can't afford to miss. It's the two fly free from Nassau promotion. You heard me right. Two people can fly free from Nassau. Just go to BahamasResidence.com for all the details so you can start your vacay today. There are 10 participating islands with 35 amazing hotels to choose from. You can go to Abaco, Acklands, Andres, Bimini, Cat Island, Eleuthera, Harbor Island, Exuma, Long Island, or San Salvador. There's so much to do on all these islands, you just may want to go to a few. And why not? With the two fly free from Nassau deal, it's like getting an island for free. Take your family, go with friends, arrange a fun out of the box business meeting or retreat. Your co-workers or employees will love you. Or go on an adventure with the guys or a girl's getaway from the guys. Or a romantic trip for two. Whatever you do, you'll thank me. Visit BahamasResidence.com for more information. That's BahamasResidence.com. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The Tuesday, August 1st edition of Talking Ads continues right now. And we're up into the uh, 5 o'clock hour. 5.35 p.m. is the time. Talking some NFL now with Pearlie. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Say, so find me and up in Minnesota. In Minnesota? Mm-hmm. Wow. All of that for Minnesota? Minnesota, and they, they in the playoffs? They are. That is true. So, I mean, that's a good move for them. You know, that division ain't the best division, so that's a good run for them. It is. It is a weak division. Yeah. We'll be switching to NFL, Pearly. Yeah. All right. And uh, here's, according to Cynthia Freudland from the NFL Network, here are her top five wide receivers to break out in 2023. Okay. So, you know, from a fantasy perspective, this might be a little tidbit. Some fantasy players might be interested in hearing. And there's a couple of names on there that are going to jump right out. Uh, I'm listening. Okay, here's a text that just came through. Naughty, you think JJ is happy. I'm even happier. You know why? Verlander didn't go to the choking Dodgers. Pearly wanted Verlander, and he didn't get him. Ha, 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 ha. LOL, 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 LOL. Uh, I'm not going to even comment, Jeff. I'm not going to comment. <laughs> All right. 
who she has in number three. It makes a lot of sense. John Mechie the third. Remember, he was with uh, had leukemia, diagnosed with leukemia last year with Houston. Didn't play until maybe the end of the season. Got in the game, and um, I think he. I think you know, he missed his entire he's rookie season. Healthy. As a matter, he's a matter he's of he's fact, healthy. he missed his entire rookie season. But he's now back in action, and apparently he's been turning heads at Texas training camp. And uh, he seems inspired. He's inspiring his team. And he could step up and become the number one on that team, especially with C.J. Stroud stepping in as the number one good. quarterback. They got a good quarterback. They got a good combination. They, they got something to work with. Both come from great college programs. All right? And, and what helps is Michi can play the third. He can play the slot, or he can play the, the outside. Yeah. So he's he's a weapon. I, I like this pick here at number five. Keep an eye okay. on him there, and he's worth drafting in the drafts in the later rounds because he could end up being an awesome flex for somebody all season long. Or, 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 or a, um, a, bi, a bi week somebody will start up. Correct. Um, here's somebody that I think should catch a lot of balls, especially with the way Atlanta's going, and that's Drake London. Yeah, Atlanta's going to be a big improve, a very big improved team this year. What was surprising is London posted the third highest target share among all NFL receivers last season, only trailing okay. your Tyreek Hill, thirty point two per game, and Devontae Adams thirty two point three. But London was a robust twenty nine point two for number three. That's interesting. The team started multiple quarterbacks and finished seven and ten. London's targets were generally more quantity than quality. With a clean bill of health for the pass catching core this season, he should be the lead dog. And especially with Bajan Robinson at running back taking some pressure off of. We'll wait to see. So we'll see how that happens, you know, in Atlanta, but they have stuff in place. Now, here's somebody that uh, decided to show his bungee uh, against the Cowboys last year, you know, and then let everybody know he'd arrived, and that's Christian Watson in the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and I think uh, he might be the one to accelerate the most, considering they have a new quarterback in Green Bay. They're gonna have to. They're gonna like. They need look, to find somebody new. Lean on each other. They gotta lean on each other. Correct. Now, according to to, to Pro Football Focus, Watson's average of six point uh, four yards after catch, or per reception, ranked fourth in the league among receivers with at least forty catches. The top three were Jalen Waddle of the Dolphins, 6.7, Rondell Moore, 7.1, and Debo Samuel, 9.6. Watson also uh, ranked second in contested catch rate at 75% behind only Darnell Mooney, 83.3% of the Chicago Bears. So there, there's potential there. Now, here's something that is kind of surprising to me at number two. Now, he showed flashes last year. But he was injured a lot. But apparently, Jahan Dotson, the second-year receiver for the Washington Redskins, is somebody... I don't know why I didn't hear his name in a long time. But he was a stud coming out. And early last year, yeah. remember, he was he made some catches. He was in the conversation. Then had the, the ankle injury. Then had the hamstring injury. Um, he's a great first down. He gets first downs. Yeah. He moves yeah. the chains. <laughs> so in that Washington offense, he could be a, become a solid possession receiver because we know scary Terry McLaurin is the is the outside threat. <laughs> okay, I, I I don't know. The jury is majorly out on this Jahan number two. You know what I mean, Pearly? I I, I don't see it, but you know now, I could be wrong. I, I haven't paid any attention to him, so I ever I can't tell you much about him. So. I Num could be wrong, but I don't see it. Number one on her list, and it makes a lot of sense. And, and both of us were high on this guy last year because he fell to the second round in the draft. And we said when Pittsburgh drafted him, they got a stud receiver. I'm talking about George Pickens. Yes. Now, yes. I think him and, 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 and Pickett, the quarterback, I think they got chemistry together. All right? Yes, yes. Because they came in yes. together. The addition of Allen Robinson to go along with who they do have there already Kind of, and and uh, Deontay Johnson kind of makes it, you know, a decent receiving core. He quietly could become the number one receiver in that that group because of the chemistry with Pickens. Okay. And at the end of the day, um, he's six three. He held in nineteen to twenty eight contested catches, sixty seven point nine percent, that ranked third among qualified receivers. 
very bad. And only two players had more contested catches than Pickens. Justin Jefferson, 22 of 40, a 55% rate. And DK Metcalf, 24 of 47, a 51.1% rate. And Justin Jefferson that's and DK company, Metcalf, both pro bowlers, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, both, yeah. Joe Jefferson, number one wide receiver. Considered the so, number one wide receiver. When you look at it, Pickens is not in bad company right there. And speaking of another Pittsburgh Steeler, apparently Joey Porter Jr., their, their you know, primetime quarterback, cornerback who they drafted this year, um, apparently he is he's doing work. And apparently he's getting high grades from Patrick Peterson, and they could say that it could be a Peterson-Porter combination as the starting corners for, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, I know it will be like that. I know I know he's like hot up for that. Nah. And, you know, Joe, he got, he got good, he got a good pedigree, you know. So I expect, I've been to be drafted. I expected good things out of him. I thought Pittsburgh made a good move in picking him. So let's see what happens. They still think of in that division, but that's all right. No, I don't think they win that division either. I don't think they make the playoffs. Who, the Steelers? I don't think they make the playoffs. No, I think they improve. I think they play spoiler in the division, but I don't think they make the playoffs either. They can't. Too much, too much. The AFC East alone may put maybe put three three teams in the playoffs. Boy, I don't know. That's a possibility. It could be a possibility. Which division are you talking about? The East, AFC East. They could put three teams: Buffalo, Miami, and the Jets. Get all they could, they could, they could possibly make all three. Yeah, they particularly could. if Tua stays healthy. Then if Tua stays healthy, the AFC East can be so sweet to watch. That will be a very sweet division, especially those division games. Yes. Yes. You know, we'll see. We'll definitely see. I, I think the division games in the AFC East are going to be outstanding this year. I think there's going to be I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to those games. I'm looking forward to Dallas and, and the Eagles play. I'm looking forward. I'm, there's the games I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Baltimore and Cincinnati. These are the kind of games I think are really big, big-time games this season. I, I think you may be right there, Pearly. Those are going to be some really good games. Let's check out the yeah. baseball schedule today so we can get our picks in. And and I talked to yeah. I talked to Big Eddie at the Island Game. And guess what? The Island oh. Game going to do a, a fantasy portion this year. Tell tell Eddie write up that contract because I'm going to be a part owner of that company. Pearly, after the Pearly, season. you have a good shot at fantasy, brother. I I, know. I personally cannot participate because you know they sponsor yeah. my show, but. I could offer you a whole hell of a... I know you know how to divide. Oh, I do. You went to sack. <laughs> I, I know how to win fantasy leagues, too, though. Of course. But, you know, you, you, you get another big winner like me, you know, as your as you, as you consultant. We can't go wrong, brother. Yep, yep. Sounds like a plan. Because nobody could wake you up at 3 in the morning and say, get this dude off waivers because nobody sees it and, and, and go scoop him up now. And then everybody wake up at 8 in the morning all mad and upset at Pearly because why? Pearly got that inside tip. Hey, hey. All right, so here we go. Let's let's look who we like hey. tonight. The Marlins and the Phillies, man. The Phillies look like they're playing hot ball. You were right yesterday. Phillies ended up losing too, but winning last night. Yeah, but I think the Marlins will take them tonight. I like the Marlins to, to rebound tonight. The Yankees and the Rays. I like the Yankees to rebound tonight as well, too. I actually I'm pretty much giving up on y'all, but you know. Cause and 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 Eflin pitching tonight for Tampa Bay. Yeah, so no, I don't know about that. No, no, yeah, we're going with Tampa Bay. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, man, listen, I can't lose money on the Yankees. I got to drive in. And if that means bet against yeah, them, yeah. bet against them. Pirates and the Tigers. I like the Pirates in this one. They've been playing hot ball lately. Yeah, I like the Pirates. The Nationals and the Brewers. The, the Nationals got one last night. I like the Brewers to rebound tonight. Yes, they need to. Blue Jays and the Orioles, man. My parlay was set last night, man. I had six out of seven Stone Cold luck. I had Baltimore and 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 stinking uh, Toronto to go over six and a half, and they ended on six. Oh boy! Lost okay. by half a run, man. Ah, that was oh, okay. that that one sucked. But Baltimore, Baltimore is really impressing me. They are really impressing me. Braves and the Angels. I like the Braves to win that one. I think I go with the Angels. The Angels got a. They they trying to prove something. I think the Angels take them tonight. Cardinals and the Twins. I like the Twins to get it done because they're, they're, they're yeah. playing for playoff positioning. Rangers and the White Sox. I like the Rangers to get that done tonight. Yeah. Reds and the Cubs. You can't go against Ellie De La Cruz and the Hot Reds right now. They're playing hot ball. All night. Royals and the Mets. I like the Mets in this one. They're just a better yeah. of, of, of two crappy teams. 
You like the Mets in this one tonight? Over the Royals. They're the best of two crappy teams. What's going on with Zach Greinke? One and 11? Garbage. Can't get no kind of runs. Boy, okay. Astros and Guardians. Astros. Astros. Padres and Rockies. I like the Padres. Mariners yeah. and the Red Sox. I like the Mariners. I like the Red Sox tonight. They're low throwing for them. Giants and the Diamondbacks. I like the Giants tonight. And y'all got uh, the A's. Giants, well, Giants work off on them last night, right? Yeah, and y'all got the A's tonight. So I like the Dodgers over the A's. Yeah, I think Lance, uh, Lance Lynn, he's, he's happy to be in a new environment. I think he should pitch a good game tonight. He, he should get me but 10 strikeouts. Free there, jumbo jacks. There you go. So uh, that, uh, that right there will get us to the break there, Pearly. All right, because we got uh, Colin Cowherd taking us home tonight. And apparently the Heat have revealed another trade package for Damian Lillard. Ah, oh, Lord. The Heat really want Lillard, and Lillard really want the Heat, you know. This, this is a bad courtship now, boy. It's yeah, obvious they won't be Portland together, so put them together. Yeah, but I don't blame Portland. Hold out for what you could get. You can't just give up that superstar and then end up in nothing. No, I agree. Hold out for what you could get. Hold so, out for what you could get. I don't blame you. Fight it all the way to the end, and I, I support Portland on that move. We'll, we'll, we'll check out Colin Cowherd's breakdown on the flip side of the break, but I appreciate you, Pearly. Good stuff as always, and hopefully your Dodgers don't let you down tonight. So I'll be all right. I can't say the same for my Yankees. I just can stay quiet and hold my corner. Oh, boy. Knowing that Hank Steinbrenner Jr., Hank Steinbrenner going to break out the checkbook in the offseason. Thank you, Jesus. You hope. He can break it out. Trust me. And he can spend. We're hoping. He can spend. We don't go, we, Pearly, we don't go two, three years like this without him breaking the checkbook coming. That's true. We'll see. All right, man. Good stuff. Everybody who chimed in today, we're going to get to the break. Flip side of the break. Colin Coward taking us home with the latest on the daily. Uh, Damian Lillard, a trade update to the Miami Heat. The latest offer on the table. Could he be a Miami Heat member by the end of this NBA offseason? Who knows? Colin Coward will give you the latest. And we and Pearlie will check you tomorrow right here for the August 2nd edition of Talking Edge, which will be on a Wednesday. And don't forget, we're now 30 days away from my birthday. Thank you very much. Have a great one. Later. Don't forget that date, Pearly. I can't. You can remind me every every day. You darn right. Let's get to the break, Later. Mr. Producer. <laughs> Later. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at cancercenter.com. From the fried chicken experts, creators of the Kentucky Chicken, the KFC Crispy Barbecue Sandwich features a 100% premium white meat Kentucky Fried Chicken Filet stacked with bacon, cheddar cheese, the fried onions, and barbecue sauce on a toasted, buttery brioche bun. The new KFC Barbecue Crispy Sandwich is available only for a limited time. Try one today and enjoy a whole new level of flavor. KFC, it's been good. George Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy styles. We cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes. John's also now carry small home appliances. So come on in today at John's. There'll be Put fashion at your feet. We're gonna give you a check every week for a year. Percy Spencer Plan, Island Game, keep you with it. Percy Spencer Plan, Dream Big, we will help you live it. Percy Spencer Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Spencer Plan, from the friends you can trust. It's winning is a must. Come on, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this. This is Guardian Radio, 9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. We talked NBA for a while, and we don't for the next five months, but this was interesting. According to Shams Sharanya, um, 
the Miami Heat have been preparing a trade package for Dame, Damian Lillard, which includes, according to Shams, or first-round picks, second-round picks, and potentially a young player. Now, it's also potential pick swaps. That could be useless. You want pick swaps from terrible teams. Miami's not terrible. They would also include, I would imagine, Kyle Lowry in this. Expiring contract makes a ton of money. you got to put a big contract in there. Kyle Lowry's the obvious one. So it's going to be three to four first-round picks, some second-round picks, a good young player, and Kyle Lowry. And I think Portland and Miami. I'm completely fine with that. It puts pressure on the Blazers scouts. Well, they've been pretty good. Anthony Simons, 24th pick. Shaden Sharp, 7th. They've been pretty good. So um, it also works on the Blazers' timeline. Go to the Instagram account for the Blazers this morning. They got young guys on that and Nurkic, right? Like they're, we know what they're doing here. You, you got Scoot Henderson's 19 years old, Shaden Sharp's 20, Anthony Simons is 24. So if I can get a young player and a bunch of draft picks, I've said this before, when you make an NBA trade, who's the star, whatever team it is, Shaq to the Heat, you're going to lose the trade for the first two years. Can you win for the next six to seven after that? The Lakers knew when they split Shaq and Kobe up, first couple of years, Shaq was going to win and win big. Kobe didn't have a running mate. They had to wait to make a deal. So they knew for two years, but they knew that Kobe was in better shape. He was more, didn't have feet problems. So they knew by year three, four, five, six, seven, going forward, the Lakers felt we made the right choice. For the first two years, Butler, Damon, Bam, with Eric Spolra, potentially, and certainly vie for it. But Damian's now 33. He's had some injuries. He's a smaller player. He'll be out of his comfort zone. He'll be in a new franchise. I'm sure he'll still be great. But it's not like Portland was a championship team with him. Didn't they average like 32 a game last year? They were nine games from the play-in game. That's with Dame. So if this is the package, which is three to four first-round picks, a couple of second-round picks, a good young player, forget the pick swaps, and Kyle Lowry's contract, I'm great with it. You're going to lose the first two years of this deal anyway if you're Portland. Who gives a rip? Go win years three to eight. That's what you do when you lose a star. And by the way, you got a lot out of Dame. You sold a lot of tickets. You kept your fan base loyal. They still sell out. You didn't win a championship. You got, you know, you got some playoff wins. But the future for Portland's incredibly bright. Everything works on your timeline for Scoot, Anthony Simons, Jaden Sharp. I've always thought Nurkic is an undervalued player. He's had some injury issues, but he's a good, he's good big. So I that if that's the deal, I'd make that deal and have no problem. Scouts, this is what we pay you for. Go hit on those second and first round picks. I mean, Portland's going to have their picks. They're not going to be great because they're so young for years. So it's very possible Portland's going to be drafting somewhere between 9 and 13 and take Miami's picks at the bottom of the first round. You get three straight years of two first round picks if you hit on three of the six with the guys you have and the guy Miami gave you. That's, that's pretty exciting. If I could have Nurkic, a good young player for Miami, six draft picks in three years, and I hit on half with Simons, Sharp, and Scoot. That's a playoff team. That's a big-time team. So I'd make that deal. When's the last time you looked at your tires? I mean, really looked at your tires. Are they low? Well, bad for fuel economy and bad for safety. Go to TireRack.com. Full line right now of Firestone tires. Whenever you sign up, at TireRack.com. They ship them fast and they ship them free to one of over 10,000 recommended installers. They may come to your work or home. Total convenience, total game changer, and put them on there. 40 years of crushing it the way tire buying should be. Go to TireRack.com slash Colin, C-O-L-I-N. Also, two years free road hazard protection. Doesn't matter how new those tires are, you run over potholes, construction, winter roads, screws, nails. Two years free road hazard protection. The way tire buying should be and is at Tire Rack. Oh, almost too much of a show today. I feel like I'm spoiling you. Live in Los Angeles on a Tuesday, it's The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening or watching, lots of choices. Thanks for making us part of your day. A bonanza of stuff today. 
Honestly, maybe I should scale back. I feel like you're getting ice cream for breakfast. The show needs more broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Vegetables for the kids. All right, J-Mac, we got a lot to talk about today. And um, I like the inside of players, but a lot of players play the game. They don't necessarily watch the game or know the game. We, we kind of know that. Over the course of time, you interview players. Mm. Some play it, some think it. Some watch it, some know it. Some just play it. Yeah. Is, that, is that fair? Yeah, I would say that's a fair assessment, yeah. Yeah. So I'll start the show today with the NFL Top 100 list, voted on by the players exclusively. I'm not bothered that Kirk Cousins rose 57 spots and is now ahead of Aaron Rodgers. We know that's not the case. We know there's not a single GM in the league that thinks Cousins is better than Aaron Rodgers. But he had a big year. Players look at the standings and go, ah, Kirk is humming. No, it's the fact that Justin Fields is ahead of Trevor Lawrence. (laughs) Players aren't watching the games. Or that Dak now is way ahead of Lamar Jackson. So here's the thing about athletes. NFL players are not watching Red Zone. They're playing the games. They're not doing deep dives on PFF or Warren Sharp's analytics. That's what we do. They're watching highlights. And so if you're a highlight guy, you'll go up the chart. And the truth is they're watching film of the next guy they face. A tackle's watching the edge rusher. Um, Joey Bosa played six games last year. Six games. He's rated ahead of Trevor Lawrence. They're not watching Jags games, apparently. Trevor Lawrence is really good, top 10 quarterback, and led a uh, pretty anemic franchise to the playoffs and a win with a heroic second-half comeback. Dak missed five games. Lamar Jackson, who's better than Dak, missed five games. And yet Lamar's injury was talked about a lot more, and so he plummeted in the standings. Well, Dak missed five games, and the Cowboys went 4-1 and one when Dak was out. Did you watch the Ravens' offense when Lamar was missing? It dried up. 24 points a game to 13. Basically 50% of the offense left. Dak left. Cooper Cush filled in. Cooper Rush filled in. It was the same team. <laughs> They're not watching the games. And it's not their job. Their job is to play the games. Some guys play it, some guys play it, think it, some guys watch it, some guys just watch their position. But Lonzo Ball got four all-star votes this past year. He didn't play a single game. Joey Bosa played six games. The other thing is athletes, and I understand this, tend to overvalue sheer athleticism. If you got hops, if you got handles, if you can bust you know, a run, if you got speed, players love sheer athleticism, overvalue it. LeBron James, one of the smartest players of my life, one of the absolute smartest basketball players I've ever seen play, thought Russell Westbrook would work. Westbrook's hyper-athletic. Players love a Zach Levine. He's not a winning player. Players love people that play above the rim in NBA basketball. They love the, the dunk contest. Baseball players love the home run derby. NFL players love sheer athleticism. It's more than that. That's why if I was a GM, very rarely would I listen to a player's perspective. You can get a veteran player and just, you know, go ask him. Is he soft? Is he tough? What do you hear in the league? I think that has value. The old Draymond Green guys you can lean on, been around, Who do you struggle to defend? You can go to a great offensive player. Hey, man, who is who who gives you fits? I think you can go sometimes to an offensive tackle and go, hey, man, we're looking at this rush end. How hard is he to block? I think there's value in all that stuff. But players aren't paying attention. They're not grading and watching Warren Sharp and PFF and the red zone. And that is not their job. It's why I bring athletes on the show, but we're picky. Increasingly picky. Dak and Lamar, you got to be kidding me. Justin Fields' highlights are great. You think he's better than Trevor Lawrence? <laughs> Come on now. Joey Bosa barely played last year. But nobody watches Jacksonville. And you can see in these players' lists. I got nothing against Kirk Cousins. But he rose 57. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.